And it's time to take a look at what's making headlines around the globe. And for that, I'm joined here in the studio by Dipti Laurent. Hello, Dipti. Hi, Annette. We're going to take a look at uh, the fact that there's a lot of speculation ahead of this report that's expected to come out of the US into the killing of Saudi journalist and critic Jamal uh, Khashoggi. That's right. And a lot of new moves from the US as it boosts pressure on Saudi Arabia. That's how the Turkish newspaper Harriet Daily puts it on its front page. It comes after Donald Trump acknowledged the existence of an audio recording of uh, of Khashoggi's murder inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. But the US president says he would not listen to the, quote, suffering tape now calls a mounting for the Saudis to face the consequences, in particular, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who this, whom the CIA has linked directly to the killing. Of course, there are a lot of questions of what sort of uh, course of action Donald Trump is actually going to take as a result. That's right, and how it will change Donald Trump's foreign policy when it comes to Saudi Arabia. In fact, the Wall Street Journal says Trump's Saudi policy is going uh, is growing rockier with these uh, with these events. Will the House will the White House maintain its quote unqualified alliance with the Saudi leadership, or will it adjust its foreign policy in response to international concerns over Hashogji's killing? And and the aftermath, even if that means sacrificing vested interests that the U.S. has with Saudi Arabia. Now, the Washington Post, which is a publication where Hashogji was a contributing columnist, wants one burning question asked of all sides. Why would anyone bring a bone saw to a kidnapping? In fact, that's a uh, headline from this uh, article. The paper really taking to task, in particular, the U.S. for not pressuring the crown prince on the details of the killing, and or questioning their changing versions of what really happened. To Malta now, where investigators say they've identified the uh, people who may have masterminded the killing of journalist Daphne Caruana Galizia last year. That's right. Caruana Galizia was a high-profile Maltese investigative journalist. Her reports into corruption at, at political levels, at political top levels, earned her a lot of enemies. She was killed in a car bombing attack last year. Investigators say they've now identified a group of more than two Maltese nationals, I'm quoting here, who ordered the hit? This is according to the Times of Malta. Uh, they've uh, those uh, men allegedly contracted three men who are currently in custody uh, to plant and trigger the bomb. This is again according to the accusations they have against them. According to the Times of Malta, the investigation is at a very advanced stage. Caruana Galicia's family, though, say they've not been formally informed of any of the proceedings. And the trial is underway for nine key figures of Occupy Central movement in Hong Kong, which, of course, occurred some four years ago. That's right. Around uh, Among those nine are three co-founders of the civil disobedience movement that blocked streets in 2014 in pro-democracy protests. They were calling for the right to democratically choose Hong Kong's leader, who is uh, traditionally uh, who is usually uh, appointed by a pro-Beijing committee. The trial is the biggest concerning the movement. That's what the South China Morning Post explains, with hundreds of supporters chanting slogans in front of the courtroom. The activists are accused of causing or inciting public nuisance. They're pleading not guilty, but they could face up to seven years in prison. Now, one of the co-founders, Chan Kinman, gave a farewell talk last week in which he announced the movement's determination to continue fighting, saying, I quote, we were always willing to be sacrificed in order to wake up the people. Some very powerful words there. Now, this is called a complete change of pace <laughs> story. It's also called a test for a newsreader. Can you read this with a straight face? <laughs> a scientific d discovery of sorts that has solved the mystery of why wombat's faeces are cubed shaped. Apparently, this was a burning question in the world of science, and it's uh, stumped at least a postdoctoral fellow Patricia Yang at the Georgia Institute of Technology. Let's just break it down for you. The Australian marsupials, of course, wombats, they poop out cubes, really neat looking cube shaped poop. Uh, and it's very unusual. Yang says she's never seen anything this, quote, weird in biology. Now, she and her team performed autopsies on wombat roadkill. They discovered that the cubes actually formed towards the end of the digestive process in the large intestine. Uh, interestingly, wombats produce up to 100 cubes of poop per night. They use this to ward off predators and attract males. Uh, but their uh, feces may now enlighten our own understanding of the human body. That's something for your next Trivial Pursuit game, isn't it? <laughs> or the pub quiz.
And uh, finally, <laughs> you really are testing me today, aren't you, Darty? The Grand Slam of darts held recently was overshadowed, overshadowed by an epic row over <laughs> farting. <laughs> you can't make this up. Uh, two grown men embroiled in a very immature feud about who farted at a Grand <laughs> Slam of darts. I mean, it rhymes. It's just fantastic. All this coinciding as well on World Toilet Day. So, so <laughs> what are the odds? Anyway, recently at the competition, uh, Gary Anderson defeated Wesley Harms. He nabbed the spot in the quarterfinals of this darts competition. Harms in, uh, said later that he lost because his opponent passed wind on stage before him, leaving behind a lingering, unpleasant odour. Uh, now, you might have thought it would have stopped there, but no, Anderson then said if it had been him, he would have publicly admitted it. He's accused Harms of being the author of the bad gas. Anyway, that's his back and forth. Uh, for info, we still don't know who, if at all, there was any gas passed uh, or whether it has any impact on what is now a brutal world of darts. I was going to say, that falls into the category of breaking wind news. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's it. Thank you so much, uh, Dipti, for uh, those stories. If you want to take a look at the stories that we've been talking about, you can, of course, head to our website, thatbeenforus24.com.